titled Tap Dancer. It was not Robert T. Squirrel's intention to become a tap dancer. He'd never heard of a dancing squirrel. Though he'd had an abnormal upbringing by humans, it was still beyond his comprehension for a squirrel to learn to dance, let alone tap dance. It happened on a wet Saturday morning. Mother Twib was baking cookies in the kitchen. Darn this rain, she said. I plan to water my plants today. Now I must wait until it stops raining. Mother, Mr. Twibb said from the next room, you won't need to water your plants if it's raining. Mrs. Twibb, with an oven mitt on her hand, appeared at the door. What did you say, Father? <clears throat> Mr. Twibb shook his head. Never mind, it's not important. Okay, Father. Mother looked up and down and back and forth. Where is Robert? Mr. Twibb removed his glasses and pointed at the shelf above his desk. He prefers to be called Bobby. I named him Robert T. Squirrel, and that's what I'll call him, said Mother. Mr. Twibb looked back at the computer screen. Silly name for a squirrel. Mother said, I think it's a fine name. It's the kind of name that will take him places. Mr. Twibb said, places? The only places he ever goes is the oak tree in the backyard. And why does a squirrel need a middle initial? Bobby is a squirrel. He's not going anywhere. Mother said, well, not without a middle initial. That's why I named him Robert T. Squirrel. It sounds important, unlike Bobby. For goodness sakes, I don't know who would call a squirrel Bobby. Mr. Twibb looked up from his computer. He seemed perturbed as he removed his glasses. Mother dear, Bobby is a less formal name for Robert. Well, I don't like it. His name is Robert T. Squirrel. I put a lot of thought into it. Without a middle initial, he'd be just an average Squirrel, putting his pants on one arm at a time. Mr. Twibb ran his fingers through his thinning hair. He looked at Bobby and squinted. Should I tell her? Bobby wrinkled his nose and shook his head. Smoke, Mother shouted as she turned. My cookies are burning. Her scream so startled Bobby that he leaped from his perch and landed on Mr. Twibb's keyboard. Then he bounded onto Mr. Twibb's shoulder. Take it easy, Bobby. Bobby snuggled under Mr. Twibb's shirt collar and shivered. Squirrels are quite nervous creatures, so Mr. Twibb stroked, stroked Bobby's furry back. Once Bobby calmed, Mr. Twibb placed his fingers on the keyboard. Now, where was I? When Mr. Twibb looked at the computer screen, he blinked, for he hadn't typed the word on the monitor. Mr. Twibb scratched his scalp. I didn't type the letters T-H-E. Bobby raised his head and peeked under Mr. Twibb's earlobe. Mr. Twibb's earlobes were long, so Bobby had to stoop low. Sure enough, just as Mr. Twibb had stated, the letters T-H-E were there on the monitor. Isn't that something, Mr. Twibb said. Bobby, you typed a word. Bobby pushed Mr. Twibb's earload aside for a better look. Sure enough, Bobby chirped. He had typed a word. A sense of pride rose in Bobby's little chest. He stood on his back legs and everything felt different. What an accomplishment, he thought. Mr. Twibb said, I suspect no other squirrel in the entire world can type a word on a computer. Bobby thought he must be right. I am probably the only one. Can you do it again, Mr. Twibb asked. Bobby didn't expect that question. He didn't know how he had done it, and now Mr. Twibb wanted more. Bobby's exuberant pride caused him to make a hasty decision, and he dove for the keyboard. Bobby landed on all four paws, but immediately raised onto his hind legs. First he tapped with his left foot, then his right, he tilted his head as letters and then words appeared on the computer screen. You're dancing, 
said Mr. Twibb. Mr. Twibb's compliment inspired Bobby to consider his form. He stood taller and stretched his legs further as he pressed the keyboard, and the letters popped onto the screen. When Bobby stopped to rest, Mr. Twibb read the words. My name is Robert T. Squirrel. My middle name is The. Mr. Twibb's eyes bulged. He said, what do I see here? Mr. Twibb turned to the squirrel. Bobby raised one eyebrow and shrugged because he didn't know how he did it. Mr. Twibb said, you're a dancing typist. Let's try it to music. Mr. Twibb reached to the shelf and turned on the radio. A lively tune flowed across the keyboard, which inspired Bobby. First, he tapped with his right foot. Tap, tap, tap. Three seemed the right number of taps. Then he tapped with his left foot. Tap, tap. More would have been excessive. Mr. Twibb said, go, Bobby, go. Mr. Twibb's excitement exhilarated Bobby, so he pulled back his arms and tapped wildly. Once Bobby lost control of himself and raised his hands above his head, it was a sight to see. Mr. Twibb tapped his foot as Bobby danced, which motivated Bobby even more. As the tune crescendoed toward the finish, Bobby made a grand conclusion. He spun around, jumped in the air, and dropped his feet on the letters T and H. Bobby rested a moment to catch his breath, and then he scurried into Mr. Twibb's, onto Mr. Twibb's shoulder. Mr. Twibb pulled a handkerchief from his pocket to wipe his glasses. He put on his spectacles and leaned forward and read the text. Why, Bobby, you just typed the Gettysburg Address. Bobby raised his nose and tilted his head. He thought, you've not seen anything yet. The end.